Bobby Z, what the hell are we listening to today? Hey, hey, hey. Listen, this is what happens when you, when you have a show with a weightlifter and they don't understand the greatest baseball song that ever lived. This is the problem with you Eminem people. I'm sorry. What's up, brother? What's going on? How's it going? Good you week? Do you have any idea who's coming on this show? You give me a little insight of it. Tell me more. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Tell you uh, you mentioned the name in your circles, and everybody popped up like, "Oh my god!" Every, I, yeah, like I, I, you know, I again, I'm not a big baseball follower. You know that. Oh yeah. Um. So, but I, I would mention it to like four of my my clients, and they all have young kids, and they're like, "Who the hell are you having? Are you joking <laughs> me right now? Are you serious? Tell me the link." So I got a bunch of people like linking in because they they want to listen to what we got to talk about. Oh, They're very yeah. impressed, you know. Yeah. He sounds like a big time celebrity, and you know uh, they say a lot of accolades about him. So you know I'm very excited. And the best attributes about him, believe it or not, how amazing he is of a ball player. He's um, he's that much better of a human being, and that's what makes that's what makes him special, and that's what makes you know everyone universally loves this kid. You know, right. normally. Normally, kids on a baseball field, and obviously, you know, baseball is my thing. I've been yeah. doing my whole life. You know, the better kids usually have have like the jealousy factor, where you know other kids don't like them, other parents, you know, because right. maybe they're a little cocky and they. And let's let's face it, a lot of parents are just you know they're they're, they're envious. Well, we'll you know? talk about that later after. Yeah. I have so much I want to talk about that actually. It's good, a good no. topic to talk about. So, but with this kid, it's just you can't find you can't find anyone that's seen him play, and and if you see some of the slides that we just passed, I just saw, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Mike, I saw this kid at ten years old. Quick, quick introduction, and then we're going to bring him on. Uh, I bring my son to a tryout for the Diamond Jacks. The Diamond Jacks is one of the elite programs in the state of New Jersey, and I'm like, all right. And my son was a badass locally playing in Bayonne. But I'm right. like, let's find out. Let's find out what he is, you know, with, with the big boys. So they throw him right on the mound, and you know, after Lilo Paxi hits a, a bomb off from a home run, like after like the second pitch, there's the smallest kid on the field, I, and I mean literally, this kid's like half. It's like half the size of everybody else. I love him already. <laughs> yeah, that's a good you know, point. yeah, <laughs> that's a great point. So he's playing shortstop. There's a ground ball hit up the middle off my son. I'm like, there's a base hit. And this kid goes behind second base and fields it. And before the balls even touch his glove, it, he, he has it out and he throws it to first base. And Gosh. I'm, and, and I'm like, what the f- did I just say? Just like, see. like I looked around like, li- like literally never seen anything like it in my life. 10 year old. Right. And then about a half hour later, I saw him swing the bat with like this tiny kid <laughs> that's almost as big as him and he's hitting bullet after bullet and i 
I, I couldn't wait. I called my brother that that I said, Joey, my brother and I, baseball guys, I said, I, I, I seen the best player I've ever seen in my life tonight. Oh and, wow. And he's like, you know, and I, and I and everybody's like, Yeah, yeah, okay, right, right. And then I'd be like, you know what? Watch, come watch him. And then I had the joy of Joey made the team. Right. Uh, tremendous team. They were 33 and two, 35. I, I watched this kid 35 times, Michael. And I'm going to tell you what, man, I halfway through, I went up to his father and I said, I, I, I want, can I, can I have you, son? Can I? Have you, son? <laughs> and he's like, well, it you would say that. It like, depends on what day of the week it is, you know, you know we can, but I'm like the greatest human being I've ever met. And my, and, you know, even as great as he was, I always knew stardom was in his future right but uh we're gonna we're gonna bring him on and we're gonna talk yeah can't wait to have him yeah for sure about so many accolades he's had but uh but we got a nice audience watching anthony and we got uh we're gonna have and if got a lot of people yeah and for our audience um let me just throw up this uh if you have questions let me grab the, hey man there he is hey what's up bobby d what's thanks up, so much for man? having me um, How are you? It was cool to look through all those old pictures too. Oh, it was, fun, right? it was it was fun. The, the memory. I just got to get this banner out of the way because my head is being is blocked off. So let me get this off. Modern technology. There we go. So, AB, hey, how you feeling, man? Great. Yeah, yeah, I'm down in Tampa, so ready to get going. Oh, you're already down there. I didn't realize you're down there already. Yeah. Yeah, I got down Friday. Okay. Good. Anthony, this is my good friend of 35 years, Mike Hurley. Say hello to Mike. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Thanks for having me. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure's ours, actually. Heard a lot of great things about you. You know, I train a, a lot of uh, local parents around here, and they have kids that are 12, 12 and a little older. And I mentioned that you were coming on the show, and they were like, what? Who? How'd you get that person? How do you know them? <laughs> I'm like, you know, and, and Bobby, you know, I told about Bobby, and that was it. So you got a lot of people following you. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I guess it's kind of crazy to think about, but you got um, a lot of fans up here. I mean, we're in Westfield, New Jersey, so you got a lot of kids in Westfield, New Jersey, right now listening to you. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I'm from Watchung, so not too far. Yeah. So Mike, so Mike, he's a Jersey boy. Originally, family's from Brooklyn, right? At um, my uh, grandma lived in Queens, but my parents, yeah, they met in Brooklyn. They lived okay. in Brooklyn up until I think I was born. So you're a young kid. I saw how special you were. When did you, like, have you always, this is an important thing, because let's, let's, we're talking to young players now, whether we're 10, 12, did you always visualize success? Like, what was your picture in your mind as you were going through the system at the, uh, at the lower level? Um, I don't know if I ever really thought about, like, future success or what I really wanted to do. I just – Love playing, love playing with Joey D, with Lilo, all the guys you're just saying. And it's just so much fun to play those weekends at Diamond Nation and um, wake up at 7 a.m., have my dad rush me to the field, play those 8 a.m. games. And it was just always in the moment. And I think that was the best part of it. And what's still the best part now is just um, how much fun it is. And I think that's why I train really hard and work really hard because when you're in those situations, when you're trying to win a championship every weekend like we were um, on a team like that. Um, I think that's the best part of the game. Your work ethic and, was second. And you, I'm uh, sorry, Bob. I was just going to ask. I wanted to ask, like, what is what is your training like? So so these kids know what it takes to get to that next level. Like, some kids just think they all they have to do is show up and play a game. They don't understand the practicing and, and the intensity of the training. Like, what is that training like for you? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess it, it's how you look at it, right? It's um, definitely a lot, like you said, not just showing up to practice. I mean, um, my dad and I would be out in the cages in our backyard for hours until like midnight. My mom would be screaming out the window for us to go to bed, stuff like that. But um, at the same time, like everyone says, like the minor leagues is a huge grind. And um, I just think it's how you look at it. You know, it's like, we get to play and practice baseball all day. And when I think back to high school and even younger, when we were playing for the Diamond Jacks, stuff like that, you just look forward to baseball practice so much. It was like the high, highlight of your day. You'd get all your schoolwork done to be able to go to the cage or go to the field or anything like that. 
So I think just like thinking back on stuff like that and just appreciate stuff and put it in perspective helps a lot. Now, Mike, so here's, here's the deal. So Anthony's a stud at every level. He gets to high school and he plays for Del Barton, which is a powerhouse baseball program. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony, two state championships, correct? Yes. Two state championships um, gets – a home run in the clincher in his second championship, state championship. And Mike, two players on his team, highly, highly recruited. Both were committed. Anthony was committed to go to Vanderbilt University. So was his teammate, Jack Leiter. So I think it was the first first team in, in New Jersey history to have two Vandy commits from the same high school team. Wow. So, Mike, he's got a decision to make. Like, he's 18 years old. And, you know, you can get drafted or you can go play for Vandy. Now, and I have to admit, I was rooting for Vandy because I wanted to watch you play college baseball. You know, I wanted to see you tear it up because now, you know, at the, at the minor league level, I knew I didn't know where you'd be. I'm thinking I'm certainly not thinking the Yankees. I'm thinking you could be in Omaha somewhere or Seattle, right, Tacoma. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to watch my boy. So I'm thinking ESPN, SEC Network. So I, I talked to your dad like a couple of days before the draft, and he's like, "Yeah, he's going to Vandy. He's he's going to school." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right, cool. This is great." And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting on this very computer. I got the draft on. As no, as a, they only they only broadcast round one, Mike. Oh wow! So there's no reason for me to. I have, I'm doing work, and I got the thing on, and with the with the I don't remember twenty whatever pick the New York Yankees select Anthony Volpe. I oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I started screaming, what? Oh, <laughs> That's got to be such oh, amazing. Oh. I mean, especially, I mean, like I said, and then I'm, I, immediately I want to yell at his father. I said, you told me he was going to the <laughs> I, 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 almost, man, I almost missed his life. I would have oh. been so pissed. Somebody would have texted me and said, and Anthony's at the end. And, I and, and Mike, the Yankees. I, I, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, mean, of all teams. Like the team you root for your whole life. All, your whole life. Your whole life you well, and bri- briefly, like talk about that night because you were committed to Vandy. You were you were you were according to that at 80 20 going to school. Talk about that day. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is kind of crazy because my dad probably wasn't lying to you. I don't even know if he's c- capable of lying to so- <laughs> to you, Bobby D, but um, it was a really, really tough decision. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um like you said, having the opportunity to just um, get your foot in the door with a team, like you said, that I rooted for my whole life. Like growing up as a kid, you just dream about it. And I felt like I couldn't pass up on an opportunity like that. That was that good. And um, I just wanted to try and take advantage of it. They weren't promising me anything. They're obviously, um, I was lucky enough that they made an investment in me, but at the same time, um, I was just so excited to just go to work and try and, take the next step and uh it's been a lot of fun so far but yeah it's kind of crazy to think back on how how late I guess I really like went all in and but when I went all in it was no looking back obviously but um it was a super tough decision and basically Mike you know that they they said and correct me if I'm wrong and and I don't you know we don't have to tell the complete details but it was like look if you want to be a Yankee like you're probably never going to have this opportunity to be drafted by the Yankees because the Yankees are usually, you know, a better team. Sure. You draft later. And, you know, Anthony could be a, a, a top five pick maybe the next year or the year after. So, right. And that was, that was a big factor part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that, that was like in the, in the cars, but at the same time, it just felt like an opportunity that was right there. And I didn't want to, I just, it was right in front of me. I just want to jump on it. I didn't want to, it was obviously tough to not jump on going to Vandy and having incredible college experience, go to the college world series and try to win a national championship. But at the same time, it was, it felt, it felt pretty once in a lifetime. And uh, I was super pumped when it came my way. So, so Mike, he's 18 years old at the time. Unbelievable. And he's paid over $2 million. Uh, to sign with the New York Yankees. So here he is, he's 18 years old and he's made more money in a day than a lot of people are going to make in a lifetime. So 
And how does that, I mean, it had to be a surreal feeling. I mean, obviously, you, we, we all love money, and you're going to love it more at all that. Trust me. But that's not the reason behind you making that decision. But when, when did that reality come into play? Like, I'm a millionaire. I don't even know if it came to play now or if it ever will. But I believe that. Too. I believe that. I, really <laughs> I think what was just so cool about it was um, it showed that the investment that the Yankees were willing to make in me, the fact that they went above the slot value and yeah. gave me a little extra, I think it just it said a lot that they were going to try and do everything they possibly could to help me become the best player I could be. And um, so far, they've – they haven't spared any expense, anything. So, um, yeah, I think from that aspect, um, regardless of the money, which is obviously a big deal, it was the investment that they made and the fact that they went a little bit over. So, so now, Mike, he gets drafted, and obviously, Cloud Nine, all the local shows, his whole family is from New York. It's the it's the biggest one of the biggest. Probably. Oh my biggest, God! It's huge. Yeah, greatest story in New Jersey baseball in a long time. So Anthony goes down to Tampa and it wasn't, this is, this is the beauty of life, right? It's, it's life is up and down, right? Yep. So Anthony goes down to Tampa and he gets about with mono and it completely, oh. completely messes him up. So your first year, Ant, talk about how tough it was. I think you hit like 219, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. Yeah, I mean, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was lower, but yeah. it was, it was a super tough year in the moment. But I've, I've like told people since then, I, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't trade hitting two nineteen or two fifteen or whatever it was. I wouldn't trade that for hitting three fifty that first year because, yeah. in a weird way, it was like the first my first experience of failure on that level for that amount of time, that very experience and. I, I had to live with it. I had to learn how to deal with it. I had to learn how to show up to the ballpark every day and just um, prepare and work on stuff and try and get better. But at the same time, it made me realize that there was a lot of stuff I really needed to work on. And if I want to become the player that I want to become, there's a lot of work from point A to point B. And it kind of, it didn't give me a wake up call because I obviously knew I had a long way to go and I needed to work on a lot of things. But it showed me that a lot of the stuff, like when I'm struggling and when I'm quote unquote spiraling, um, you got to know what you're doing and you got to know what's going to get you right, the adjustments you got to make so that you can kind of cut those things down. And obviously, I'm still working on it. I think everyone is. If someone found the cure to that, I think um, they should write a book or something. But well, what, what, would you, what would you tell the, the kids, the younger kids, you know, way, way younger than you that are going through that, those hard times that that aren't doing well in their sport and they just, you know, they're not hitting the ball at all. They're really sucking it. And they're on the verge of like, man, I don't even want to play. I love it, but I don't want to play. Like, what would you tell them to inspire them to say, hey, don't give up? Like, how did you get through all that? I mean, obviously you're at a different level because obviously you're not going to give up. But what would you tell somebody who, you know, has the potential to be great, but just, you know, it just feels like they're in a slump? How do they get out of that? Yeah, for me, it was – just looking at your, like, I knew this is what I wanted to do. And this is, I knew the player that I wanted to become that I feel like I could, I could be. And it was hard. Like I, I had to look at myself, my swing, watch video of my stuff. And I compared it to every single big leaguer or big leaguer that does damage and is the player that I want to become. And I go, the guy on the left, take out every single name. Doesn't look like all these guys on the right. And I told myself, I was like, I'm not going to be, the cocky guy that's going to say like, Oh, I'm going to be the one guy that's going to be the exception. So I, I just had to be honest with myself and realize that I had a lot of work to do and I had to, I tried to seek help and um, a lot of coaches that helped me. And I'm very grateful for that, but it started with asking the tough questions, stuff that you don't really want to hear stuff that is going to make you better in the long run. But the amount of work that's in front of you sometimes, I guess could be discouraging, but um, I think it was just super day by day. And then, I mean, at the end of the day in the season, even when I wasn't playing as well as I wanted to play, it was still a blast to go out there, be in the clubhouse right. with the guys, um, prepare for the game, and then wind down after. So in all in all, even though the struggles, obviously you want to be playing better, um, there's a lot worse things that you could be doing. Absolutely. I mean, it says a lot about, you know, your character at your age, because a lot of 
a lot of guys your age aren't thinking on your level. I mean, you're way past your age level of thinking. That's amazing. Thanks. Mike, he was like this. I'm telling you, he was like this as a as a 10, 11 year old kid. That's why the, the whole that's package, rare. Yeah, it's just it's it's totally rare. Um, so now, Mike, after this brutal model season, then we get the COVID fiasco. So now, you know, he's sitting on a terrible year. First first impression is not a good one. So of course, self doubt, and then you know maybe people doubt. Ah, oh, well, maybe they just shouldn't have picked him so high. You know, maybe maybe he can't handle it. You know, it's just, you know. Right. It's, some of the haters, that, like I said, doesn't have many, but I'm sure they're out there. Then, yeah, COVID destroys the whole season. Then he comes out the gate this year, and Mike, he jumps. So I believe at the beginning of the year, he was like the 15th New York Yankee prospect. And by the end of the year, he's ranked number one. He's their number what? one. What? Yeah. That's big stuff. He That's hits, awesome. He hits 297. He's got 27 homers, 86 ribbies. He steals 33, and he just lights it up. Like he, he lights it up. Two levels. He started out, I believe, uh, in was it Tampa? No, right? Where was the first place he started? This yeah, year? Tampa. It was okay. And then he came up to the Hudson Valley, which, by the way, is not a very pretty stadium, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, Diamond Jackson, <laughs> the Diamond Jackson better facilities for Christ's sake. But anyhow, like, that's maybe you, you can lend some of your bonus money to, to, to fix up the facility. Just saying. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, but here's the thing. Has such a great year, Mike, the trade deadline comes up, and the Yankees Yankees needed needed a few pieces. So all of a sudden, the word is out that, you know, he might be included in a trade deal. So, Ant, be honest. Did, did, it, did it bother you a little bit? Did it cross your mind? Did you think about it at all? Um, Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but um, yeah. I really didn't think about it. I'm not really on, like – the social media or any, like, yeah. I'm not really on any baseball social media, yeah. but um, <laughs> my dad was, but yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I, I, just the stuff that I can't really control, it, it's like tough for me to like worry about or think about because so um, I don't know if I, if I was thinking about that, I don't think I'd be um, showing up to the ballpark every day, excited to be there and um, giving my best, effort that day if I was thinking about stuff like that. So um, I know it's probably, it sounds weird because a lot of people oh. probably would be like so into invested in all that stuff. But um, yeah, I guess this past season, I wasn't, I, I honestly was kind of oblivious to it just because I wasn't in the loop. But then I see some of my buddies like before games get traded and then it obviously becomes like a reality that quickly. And it's just crazy to think about. Yeah, you lost like half your team on trade deadline, right? Like you're like your infield, right? A couple of Yeah. Yeah. Infield, like there's a couple of pitchers, but it was like yeah, I mean what the two guys like found out through fans yelling out in the stands. Wow. Oh, wow. That they were getting traded. So Crazy. it was it was honestly like like you see, I guess, people saying it in the stand and you read it on Sports Center, stuff like that. But then like being on the other side and seeing what like they actually go through and having to pack up and say like you really never know when you're going to see those guys again that you see every single day for the course of a season. And it's like, it's like bittersweet because obviously it's a great opportunity for them, but like on a personal level, like these are your, your best friends that you play with every single day. And then just in a snap of a snap of a tweet, stuff like that, you just don't see them anymore. It's kind of crazy. To think crazy. About. That's crazy. But you know what I was thinking, Mike? Cause I, know. I never know what you're thinking, Bob. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I was like, okay, there's, a, there's three, two infielders gone. My boy's moving up the ladder, right? I mean, I'm just being straight. Because, listen, it's very – and let's face it, the, Yan the Yankees, they draft a shortstop every year with the number one. Right? I mean, li literally, they do. So from a selfish perspective for me, because I'm like your, your father, even though I'm not, I'm like, I'm happy. They, they just cleared a couple more infielders. That makes the path a little cleaner, right? I know it's not the right way you're supposed to think, and I'm glad that you don't. Mike, by the way, I mean, did you hear what he said? I heard everything he said. That's I'm, I'm very impressed. Here's a, here's a young he, – he's not even – I don't think – are you able to drink yet? Are you 21? No. <laughs> Mike, Mike, he didn't even have a drink. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Just That's said, amazing. He just said, I try not to worry about things I can't. 
control. Control. That's how, amazing. How, ama how important is that no matter what you do in life? Everything in life. We talk about that all the time on all the show. Time. It's amazing. All the time. We do, we'll do classes with salespeople and reps, and that's, and yet. The 30s, 40s, 50 year olds. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you just said something at your age. It's amazing. And he also said another thing, boys and girls out there. He's, hmm. I know you have a Twitter account. But you just but said he's not it. on any. He don't care about any social media. You don't look at Huge. it. Huge. Yeah. God, that's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Because there are, you know, it, it, listen. There was a few times, you know, when he was struggling his first year. You know, there's, there's, you know, and there's a lot of there's a lot of you know keyboard warriors out there, Mike. They, they, oh, they, I know. They think they look like you with your muscles behind the screen, and they're probably a buck twenty two. And you know, yep. Well, we crazy. get that all day. All of them got get that all day long. And they're, and, they're, and they're writing shit. So, man, it's 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 a great philosophy that you don't get involved in, and you should never, and you should never care what other people think. I mean, yes, we all want to be loved, and 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 respected and wanted. But sometimes, when like you said, if you can't control it, you got to leave it alone. So that was one of the most powerful things you said. Now it's got to be a little weird, and, and this, I, I, like four or five years ago, you're idolizing. Guys, right? Because you you followed the game always as a kid, right? You've always followed players. So here you are, four or five years ago, idolizing players, and now you might be a couple years away from like playing alongside them. How crazy is that, bro? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's surreal to think about, just because I, I feel like I'm more of the little kid that's thinks they're larger than life than the guy that's ready to be teammates with those guys, you know, even though that sounds weird to say. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, like when, once I've actually been getting able to like meet the guys and like just see that they're normal guys, like they're just like us, you know? And, yeah. and um, yeah, I think like anyone, you have these like superhuman expectations of people, but then they're just human beings and it's even better being that because um it, it makes it it makes it a lot better in my opinion, yeah. Like like you might be playing with Aaron Judge, <laughs> right? Crazy. Like think four, four years ago, when you were probably like, "Oh my God, Aaron Judge! Look at the home run derby!" Right? You're you're in eighth grade, and you're yeah. admiring this guy. Now you might be playing with him. It's crazy. I know it's, it's crazy. Nuts, right? It's nuts. So a couple of things, and I, and I appreciate. I know you got to go, but a, a few more things, and this this will tie into what Mike and I will talk about when we when we when we have you off. But give it give me give us a typical day for you in season and the off season. Like give, give us the, the Anthony Volpe. Like right now it's off season. So obviously not counting when you're completely shut down and resting, but give us a typical off day what it looks like for a professional baseball player. Yeah, so I guess I could just go through my day today. Um, I hit at nine o'clock. We probably hit for like an hour and a half. Then I went right over to lift. I probably got there like 10 45, 11 ish. I lifted for probably, I, I sprinted and then I lifted until probably noon, 1230. And then I went home, uh, got some lunch and then, um, Field the ground balls from like two thirty to, gosh, I think we were there till four, and then hit the driving range. <laughs> and, then, oh, and, then, and then here with you guys here. So that's kind of the schedule here in Tampa. When I'm back home, um, I actually wake up at like eight a.m., drive like an hour and a half to go hit. So hit from like nine thirty to like twelve twelve thirty, um, then drive back over to Chester like an hour and a half back for a 1.30 lift. And then when I'm back home in Jersey, um, I lift a lot longer. Um, so I'm probably there till like 3.34 most days, just getting everything done. And then probably like three, <clears throat> two, three, four times a week um, after dinner, my dad and I go to the dome and uh, we feel ground balls. So that's his little contribution. He still hits me ground balls. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Unbelievable. And you were doing at a, at a young kid. Your work ethic was high. And we listen. We credit. I love you, mom and dad. Obviously, they're a big part of your success. By the way, I know the answer to this. But which one do you like better, mom or mom or dad? <laughs> <laughs> you 
can't do that to him. No, you know the answer time. to that. <laughs> I, know the, I know the answer. They're both going to be texting me right now. You better tell me if he said me. That's what's going to happen. Right now. But two very <laughs> Mike, two very, his father and mother are beautiful people. They they take a lot of credit for raising this young. And by the way, they have a very successful, beautiful daughter as well. Great. They, they're both successful in their lives. They raised amazing kids, and and they just got it all together. They really, they really. That's beautiful. And that's a, a credit, right, Ann? I mean, you yeah, God bless you guys. Credit. It's awesome. Well, a hundred percent. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I tell everyone they're my role models. They, um, just the sacrifices they've made since I was even a little baby when they were working so hard, um, with their jobs, but they were always willing to drive us wherever we had to go, take us to whatever park we had to go to. And my dad would throw to me till 12 o'clock when I was being a pain um, the entire night. And and yeah, I don't know. It, it was obviously so much fun for me, but you know, sometimes you obviously aren't thinking of the long day that your parents went through and how much yeah. they're sacrificing their sleep, the ke keeping up with their friends, stuff like that, that they're doing um, drive you to domination for 8.30 game on a Friday night. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely can't thank them enough. We definitely go back and forth every once in a while, but um, at the end of the day, like I couldn't do it without them. And you played all over the country as a young kid. I mean, you know, that that's also uh, your, your parents, you know, I mean, they, they're, they're able to sacrifice, send you here, play, you play for the Banditos, you're playing in this state, that state, all, all the top tournaments you played. Which you know leads me to to one thing I was going to ask you this. I got another question. I know it's going to be this is going to be a hard one. I'm going to make I'm going to get a few more difficult questions and I'm going to let you go. Um, greatest thrill of your lifetime. All right, you got multiple choice here. Okay. The Olympic gold medal. Okay. State championship hitting the home run in high school. <laughs> Getting drafted by the Yankees. Or. Getting two hits off of Bobby D in the Diamond Jack parent <laughs> wiffle ball. Oh my God. <laughs> it's got to be the two hits. <laughs> Bobby D coming with the hard questions. Yeah. Mike, you I don't know, think I, anything compares. I mean, Mike, I pitched a two hitter shutout <laughs> against the Diamond Jack team. And who gets the two hits? This son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, I am the god on a wiffle ball mound. Nobody does. <laughs> Wiffle ball. This motherfucker, he gets two hits, not one. He doesn't get one hit off me. He gets two. <laughs> yeah, Bobby D, I retired from wiffle ball after that. <laughs> no, I still got, I got, I just found this yesterday, and I was looking through the video. I, I, you know I struck Maldonado. Maldonado, by the way, Mike, is that bad? Oh, my God, you're good. And I, and Bob. I found, and Cheers, I found, Bob. And I found video striking out Stephen Reed. <laughs> Steven Reed, Steven Reed, George Those are pretty Jackson. good. Two pretty good hitters to have. Oh, yeah. But I gave up two hits to you. So obviously the greatest thrill was getting drafted. But uh, and also and don't forget wearing the bayon across your chest had to be the one of the greatest. Come on. Yeah, I still remember those Cooperstown days. Oneonta. <laughs> Fun, right? That was a, that was a good time. And of those course, the best. Yeah. Perfect game, and you got the home run in the first inning, but. All right, so I'm just going to ask him a couple more, and then I'm going to let him go. Because uh, I think I know the answer to this question. Um, besides me facing on the wiffle ball field, who is the best pitcher you faced? You know, the guy that you had the most difficulty with amateur level and currently at the pro level. Yeah, I mean, Jack's by far the best pitcher. Now, Jack Leiter is the best faced, pitcher. So you faced Jack. Yeah, yeah. All of COVID, we face each other. Um, before every season, we'd face each other, just go back and forth. And then for Team USA, for trying out, we face them too. And um, it's crazy because I, I probably face them just as much, if not more, than anyone that's probably ever faced Jack. But like to have a firsthand view of just, he's obviously always so good, but just how much better he's gotten every time I step back in the box is, is honestly crazy, but also a testament to how hard he works. So no one's really surprised, but um, yeah, I mean, just how electric his fastball is and wow. now how hard it is wow. coupled with how low he gets, how short his arm is, how you barely see the ball. And then it just explodes right on you. And then 
you take a pitch that you think's bouncing at the dirt and then you turn around to the catcher and it's right down the middle because he has that much ride or jump or whatever you call it. And then couple that with, I mean, when we were in high school, he had a really good curveball. Face him again in when we were getting ready for our season over COVID and he has a really good slider that he didn't have before. So you just think about how much better he's going to get and you know he is. And um, yeah, so I think that'd probably be like amateur because I haven't faced him in pro ball. And then um, I don't know. I don't really think about I've obviously could say Jack because I faced them so much and yeah. can really appreciate it. But when you're facing guys for only a couple of bats, it's hard to tell. But yeah. there's this guy for the Mets that threw 103 that we played against this year. I was there. Which was crazy. I was there. You were at that game? Yeah, I was in Brooklyn, right? He threw in Brooklyn. And then yeah. he was throwing 103 when he came. I don't know if he hit 103 that game. But, yeah, yeah he was – and he you, definitely, you, definitely you got, threw you got, home, I believe you got like, a hit off him. You got a hit on on a changeup or a curveball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. I don't know why he threw me that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Impressive. And, and Mike, Beautiful. just some, some context, right? He's talking about his high school teammate Jack, who who ended up going to Vandy for a year, and then signed with the Texas Rangers for seven oh. million dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's amazing. That's what Anthony's talking about. Um, amazing. So lastly, let me let me finish. I wanted to say, and so if you were your own scout, all right, your own scout, what do you say the pluses and what would you say you have to do? I know it's hard now. You don't want to do this, but give me the best attribute of Anthony Volpe. And if you were a scout, what would you say he needs the most work on? Because you don't have any bad ones, but let's just say yeah. most work on. Um, I, I'd say if I was a scout, I'd, I'd- I'd want scouts to say that I want to win and would do anything for the team to win that day and just super competitive and just really whatever the team needs on a daily basis and just that consistent player that you couldn't tell if I was 0 for 4 the night before or 4 for 4 the night before. And, I mean, I guess kind of like I said before, I can control all those things. I can control my effort. I can control – my attitude and how I show up to the ballpark, but everything else besides that, um, you can't really control once the game starts, but you can control your preparation. You control how you show up and everything like that. So I'd hope at least scouts would appreciate that because um, there's a lot of work that I think does go into that. And um, for weaknesses, um, I think everything, you know, I'm 20 years old. I don't think any 20 year old is, is the best baseball player that they, they can possibly be. So um, definitely no reason to stop working. If anything, that's why I'm working that much harder because um, I want to accomplish a lot in in the game. I want to impact um, the team sooner than later. And um, that's why I'm kind of working on everything. And I think every 20-year-old has to because if you want to become the player you want to become, uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and it never stops. It's unbelievable. Now, no, what but... uh, reading material, motivational stuff? Like, what do you what do you do for that department? Do you watch videos? Do you listen to certain types of music that pump? Like, what what are you doing to keep yourself so upbeat all the time? Um, I think a lot of that goes to just like my teammates and the guys that you're around on a daily basis. Um, I'm definitely super lucky to have such great guys in the clubhouse, around the house, stuff like that. But um, I, I guess a lot of that goes to the Yankees and the type of character guys that they draft. But, I mean, when you're in a clubhouse that there's guys like Bobby D around all, all over the place, it's hard, you know, it's hard not to be um, upbeat and be in a good mood. And you don't want to be the damper to that. So um, I think having a lot of guys that are so close and, I guess that's kind of the bad rap I think that the minor leagues get is that you don't really, you aren't really close with your teammates or close with those guys. But I mean, if you think about it for two seconds, you're with these guys every single day for eight, nine hours a day. Um, it'd probably be pretty miserable if you didn't like the guys you were going in it with. So um, I think I attribute a lot to that. I mean, we, we definitely have mental strength coaches, stuff like that, who will do whatever you need. They put together the really great presentations to just get your mind right. But I think on a consistency basis, the guys that you're around every day, you want to stay consistent for them. You know, you don't want to, they know who you are and what you're about. And when they see you're off of that, they don't want to see that. So 
Um, I think that helps a lot. A couple more things, and I'm going to let you go. I keep saying that, right? See how I lied to you? <laughs> right. um, your great, I think I know the answer to this question, but your greatest game moment this year, was it the walk-off against the Mets? Um, yeah, probably. That was that was pretty crazy. That was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and the emotion you showed, that was – because you're not – I mean, you, you play with fire, but it's almost like a controlled fire that you always played with. You were never, like, overly boisterous. You're not a rock kid. But, man, you let out some juice after that, Jack. You <laughs> yeah, I didn't – And you knew I it was like, like, yeah, I've never bat flipped before or anything in my entire life. And until, like, I didn't, I completely blacked out after I hit, hit it. So I didn't even know that I did that or whatever I did until I sat down and everyone started sending me videos that night. So I was completely as shocked as probably you or anyone else was. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Now we're going to end on this note. Because, Mike, you, you got to hear you, 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 I want you to listen to this. Anthony hits a home run later in the season, a bomb, probably, I don't know, maybe 440 feet, whatever. <laughs> and as he's crossing home plate, Michael, Anthony gets <laughs> ejected from the baseball game. What? Mike, did you hear that? I heard that. What happened? Go ahead, Ant. No, I don't know. It's I'm super embarrassed about that. Um, like you said, like I try and play with the controlled fire, but over the course of the season, it probably got away from me too much, and definitely not anything that I'm proud of. But I had to um, throw it in there. You know that, right? You what's knew, that? You know I had to throw it in there. I was, I had to. I had yeah, to. I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting out of a Bobby D Zoom call without, without hearing about that one. But I know what happened. So from a, you know, and I'm, and I'm so proud of you that you didn't take the bait because. That's, you, you just don't. You do everything right. That's why you're so annoying. You're just like <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you're just like a perfect freaking kid. But uh, I know what happened. I don't par. You know, you didn't say this. I'm saying it. That umpire had a really rough weekend, and and you hit a three two pitch, and, <laughs> uh, and you just you just had a little comment. You didn't you didn't curse. You didn't you didn't curse at him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was, was definitely the wrong though. So well, God. Uh, that's one of the things going into. We're gonna, next are we going to hear this comment? No rejections. No? <laughs> I'll, I'll fill you in when he's. He's a shy kid, uh, Mike. He's, so, I can tell. I know. We're going to get it out of him. Little, now I'm dying to know what the hell he said. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> last, I love controversy. You know I love controversy. <laughs> uh, last thing, Ed, because this relates to my, me and Mike are going to segue into how how important is nutrition? I think it's huge. Um, I think everything you do off the field impacts how you play on the field. And I think a huge part of that's nutrition. But then I think just as big of a part of that is sleep and I guess like getting off your phone and getting a good night's rest. And I think that's where all recovery happens. And, and I think to neglect stuff like that, what you put in your body, how many hours you sleep, stuff like that is just um, if you want to be the best player you you can be. I don't think you can neglect that type of stuff at all. Sounds great. Hey, V. Sounds awesome. You are the best. I appreciate you giving. The awesome call. listening to you. Is it great, man? Is it? Oh yeah, it was. It was awesome. Couple, Got couple a lot of great things out of here. He giving us the time. We appreciate. Now you're going to be in Somerset. Right. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed. What do you mean, hopefully, I, that's the words out there. What do you mean, hope? What's this hope shit? I saw it. <laughs> you see, if it was I don't know. Long, long way till April. Just gotta stay healthy and stay doing everything. All stay right, you, Mike. He's gonna be in Somerset, which is about 15 minutes from my house. You're gonna come. We're gonna oh, we're gonna come. We're gonna bring a bunch of people there, without and, a doubt. Uh, he, he's <laughs> gonna pack the house because it's very close. He's got a lot of amazing. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. Anthony Volpe, I love you, kid, man. Love Great you meeting too, you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Take care.